All right, Tina has a good question here that everyone dealing with mold, mold toxicity needs to ask themselves at some point. So if you haven't asked this question, uh, thank Tina, okay? Uh, Tina says, what not to consume? Do's and don'ts of food, okay? So number one, you need to just remove all inflammatory foods and foods that we know are obviously bad for everyone or usually are bad for everyone, things like gluten, okay? And mold can cause increased gluten problems. And I see this on everyone's anti-gliadin as well when we do the gut zoomer. Uh, gluten's got to go. Grains are about the moldiest food. So if you go on PubMed and you're searching for mycotoxins, everything you're going to read almost is about dairy and grains because that's you get moldy grains. They mold in the field sometimes before they even get stored. And if they're not stored properly and kept dry, they mold. Okay, and I know this personally. I, uh, I was out running uh, wagons and for my dad on the farm i grew up farming and he still farms and the grain bins were uh full and they were peaked up not in the middle and he wanted it leveled off so that it would when you turn the aerator on it would air uh aerate more evenly so me and i took some of our kids up and we're shoveling away and then we got all done and our son isaac who was the one that was hit bad by mold we were about to leave and all of a sudden he's like, oh, dad, I'm dizzy. And I'm like, oh, no, shoot. I never even thought about the mold in the soybeans. And the soybeans were out in the field extra long in the fall and they were literally uh, molding there. And then right when we were leaving, my dad came home and he's like, oh, I got the I got the uh, stats on the soybeans. And it, and the mold was like, I don't know, 1% or 1.3%. I forget what the number was, but it was bad. And I was like, that's literally as we're shoveling, all the dust is in the air, right? We're breathing in all these mold spores and fragments and mycotoxins and garbage from the field, which triggered a histamine uh, reaction in our sun. So that's a long way of saying grains are a problem, especially corn. Corn is one of the moldiest things. The stock, the corn cob itself, mold, uh, mold spores, fragments, mycotoxins. So uh, don't be eating the corn chips, corn on the cob, anything made with corn flour, okay? Because it can it make things worse. Dairy obviously gets moldy and um, has mycotoxins there and it's inflammatory processed sugar is an obviously no-no because the more you just raise general inflammation, the more that raises your chance of having histamine issues and mast cell issues and just, you know, inflaming something that's already inflamed. Your body's already inflamed from the uh, mold exposure. So don't add fuel to the fire. Uh, moldy foods, you know, we're talking uh, sometimes potatoes people can't tolerate, especially peanuts, peanut butter. They grow underground and get so moldy. Uh, tomatoes are known to get really moldy, especially when you see the tomato farms and then the machine just comes by, picks everything, including the ones that are all, you know, half rotten and moldy in the field that just gets mixed in with everything good. So you'll find that people can't tolerate tomato. And then if you are uh, very sensitive and you're going down the road of having histamine issues, which I hope you're not because that's what takes something awful. I know I'm going over my time here. Um, that's what takes something awful of being mold illness and then make it 10 times worse to try to heal from once you have histamine issues. And then that can lead to mast cell activation and uh, multiple chemical sensitivity. You start lighting up with all these different triggers. So Eating a low histamine diet is often going to be beneficial. And then if your oxalates are high, which we measure on the organic acid test, which is Q&A number three, um, then you may want to consider low oxalate foods as well. So um, where I was I? Tina, I hope that helps on the foods. I know it's true. Things really do shrink down. When Isaac, our son, was at his worst and he was reacting to everything. He was reacting to his high histamine foods. He was reacting to histamine liberating foods. We were keeping them low oxalate. He was down to about half a dozen foods at his worst. Okay, it was, it is awful. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. It can get awful. That's why you need to make sure you're out of exposure. You're working on the foundational parts of your body, systems of your body, like I keep talking about. Now he can eat anything and everything. He couldn't have any citrus, like any citrus. And now he gets like, a bowl full of clementines in the winter, like when they're in season around Christmas, and it just kills me. He just sits there, eats one after another right in front of me, knowing that it bothers me. I still have PTSD from those days. So uh, that, that should be an encouragement to you, though, that you get out, uh, you can get out on the other side of this. All right, I do hope that helps, Tina. Do you have questions about mold in your home or body? Book a consultation with Matt, aka the Mold Man, to guide your home and body to the next level of healing.